the day after the blood moon. This is Skywatch TV News for Monday, September 28th, 2015. I'm Derek Gilbert. The fourth blood moon of this tetrad made its appearance last night, tetrad being four total lunar eclipses around six full moons with no intervening partial lunar eclipses. The eclipse, the blood moon, visible in most of North and South America, Africa, and Europe. Some have called it a sign of the end and point to apocalyptic Bible verses that describe the moon turning blood red. Now, the Lord did put lights in the sky for signs and to mark seasons, but uh, we need to remember that the blood moons of the Bible are linked to the day of the Lord, which is the day that he pours out his wrath on an unbelieving world. And since there will be a rapture of the church prior to that event, we won't be here to see it, at least not from down here. At the same time, the moon turns red, the sun stops shining, the stars go dark, and the powers in heaven are shaken. You see this in Joel chapter 2, verses 10 and 31, Matthew 24, verse 29, and uh, kind of implied in Revelation 9, chapter 2, when the locusts are le released from the pit. Um, but since, at least here in the Ozarks this morning, the sun rose, and as far as we know, the powers in heaven weren't shaken, at least now that we can tell. Uh, it appears that uh, this day of the Lord is still at some point in the future, and we are thankful for that. But again, um, we expect to be out of here before that day occurs. The Feast of Tabernacles also began last night, by the way, at sundown last night. The third major feast of the Jewish holiday calendar, a festival calendar, uh, began. It runs through, continues through the evening of this coming Sunday, October 4th. Speaking of signs in the heavens, as I record this on Monday morning, the 28th, NASA is holding a press conference. Friday afternoon, they teased a major announcement about the planet Mars, some new discovery or some mystery solved. Speculation is that they've discovered flowing water on Mars, which would be a major discovery. Uh, my money, personally, is on discovery of an Alludium Q36 explosive space modulator, or possibly, possibly Matt Damon. Uh, I'll have more on this tomorrow once we have actually had time to uh, review the announcement from NASA. Uh, the Vatican has appointed a new director for its astronomical observatory in Arizona, Guy Consolmagno, a Jesuit priest and graduate of MIT, who was interviewed by Tom Horn and Chris Putnam for the book Exo Vaticana, has worked at the VORG, the Vatican Observatory Research Group, since 1993. He's spoken out often about the existence of extraterrestrial life and the fact that he believes being human is not a prerequisite for believing in God. According to Consul Magno, the image of God described in the Bible is not a physical description. It is an idea, and he is correct about that. However, our status as God's imagers being created in his image, his moral agents on planet Earth, is unique among God's creation, whether earthbound or extraterrestrial. And while we don't believe in the existence of extraterrestrial life, certainly there's been no credible evidence to support that theory. If someday, somehow, an extraterrestrial lands on the White House lawn, our status as God's imagers on earth would not be changed. It would not affect Christian doctrine or our status on earth should have no impact on our faith. Pope Francis wrapped up his tour of the U.S. over the weekend, celebrated Mass in Philadelphia. His homily focused on little gestures that go a long way. He described um, quiet things such as a warm supper or a blessing before bed, a hug at the end of a long day. And these are nice things. With all due respect to Pope Francis, this is not the gospel. I'm not going to single out Pope Francis. There are plenty of Protestant preachers who don't preach the gospel either. As Chuck Missler pointed out on this program last week, the Apostle Paul boiled it down to a few verses at the beginning of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The gospel by which we are saved, and Paul described this as being of first importance, is simply this. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, was buried, and was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. That's it. And he goes on to describe, in fact, 1 Corinthians 1 through 19, 15 uh, verses 1 through 19 is well worth your time to read. Paul goes on to point out to the church at Corinth, if Christ is not raised, then we are still in our sins and our hope has been in vain. If our faith in Christ is for this life only, or to put it another way, um, if our faith in Christ is to live our best life now, then we are of all people most to be pitied. So why do we here at Skywatch TV focus on uh, so-called fringe topics like UFOs and extraterrestrials, ghosts, giants, conspiracy theories, secret societies, demonic possession, and so forth? Uh, it's because the world is fascinated by these topics, and it is seeking answers, hungry for answers. And many of the people looking for answers are sitting in the pews of your church on Sunday morning. 
if we, who should be the experts in the supernatural realm, we have the definitive book on the supernatural, if we won't answer those questions, there'll be, people are, will go to the rest of the world, and the world is more than happy to provide those answers. Case in point, another article from the Daily Mail in England over the weekend uh, addressing some of these issues. They interviewed scientists about the miracles of the Old Testament, and of course they came up with natural explanations for everything from the parting of the Red Sea to Noah's flood to the creation of humanity, suggesting that the story in Genesis of God creating Adam from the clay of the earth was actually inspired by amino acids commingling in clay to form the first proteins. One scientist even claimed that Moses' experience with the burning bush was the result of Moses encountering a bush that just happened to be growing over a natural gas vent and that the voice of God Moses heard was a hallucination brought on by a substance Moses imbibed from the ayahuasca plant. In other words, Yahweh didn't really speak to Moses. Moses was just tripping. Those are the kind of answers people will get from the world. Now, there are plenty of apologetics resources available to us in the church to confirm for us that these accounts are true and accurate and have been accurately preserved down the millennia. But we failed to use them, which is why here in America, more people believe that we're being visited by extraterrestrial than believe in the God of the Bible. We've abandoned those people seeking answers to the world, to those who are faithless or to those who put their faith in lesser gods. And again, with all due respect to the Pope, because I'm not singling him out here, if we teach only that the Bible is about being nice to each other. We have completely missed the point. And we've missed the point of the supernatural war for our souls that is going on around us. Now, Tom Horn uh, occasionally gets called a fear monger for claiming that the U.S. government is trying to create super soldiers, but uh, there is a new book out that backs up his claim in The Pentagon's Brain, A History of DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. The journalist Annie Jacobson claims that the group is testing neuroprosthetics, chips implanted in the brain to enhance performance on the battlefield and to help traumatized soldiers recover more quickly. Jacobson adds that the Pentagon also hopes to find the secret to artificial intelligence through this research. But of course, the big question with everything that DARPA does is how can this be weaponized? Some quick notes on geopolitics from around the world, focusing on the Middle East, of course. China apparently joining Russia in Syria. A Syrian military source is quoted as saying China will deploy troops and military aircraft to that nation within six weeks, uh, joining a coalition with Russia and Iran against the rebels that are trying to overthrow President Bashar al-Assad. Uh, there are photos that reportedly show a Chinese aircraft carrier docked at Tarsus in Syria been circulating around the web for several days now. Meanwhile, Hezbollah, which has been fighting alongside Syrian government troops in that war, has received a shipment of tanks from Iran, 75 Russian T-55 and T-72 heavy tanks, the first in Hezbollah's arsenal. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu presented evidence, uh, intelligence of this new uh, armored division to Vladimir Putin when they met at the Kremlin in Moscow last Monday. And Russia has announced naval exercises in the eastern Mediterranean Sea. Uh, Russian officials say that the drills were planned last year have nothing to do with the ongoing war in Syria. National Preparedness Month continues, and uh, Skywatch TV continues our series of reports, interviews on preparedness. Carl Gallup's returns to discuss his new book, Be Thou Prepared, on Skywatch TV that will air tomorrow night, Tuesday night, on the uh, Christian Television Network. That's DirecTV Channel 376, Dish Network Channel 267, and uh, the Glory Star Satellite Channel 117. Also streams live to the Internet at the Christian Television Network's website, ctnonline.com. Uh, later in the week, if you missed the broadcast, you can watch it on demand, both at our Roku channel. If you have a Roku account, you've not yet added Skywatch TV. Just log on to the... Uh, Roku Channel Store and search for us. You'll find us there. Or you can get complete instructions from our website, skywatchtv.com, which is also where you find the link to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And these daily updates and our weekly programs posted both to YouTube and available for streaming through Roku. Uh, in October, which is almost upon us now, Tom Horn and the Skywatch TV news team go on the road to the uh, Strategic Perspectives Conference in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. That's presented by Chuck Missler's Koinonia Institute, October 23rd through the 25th. The dates, if you'd like to register and need more information, log on to Koinonia Institute. 
www.rockymountainmissions.org. Registration also coming up quickly for the 2016 Rocky Mountain International Prophecy Conference. Uh, registration opens October 13th at prophecywatchers.com. And as we still have a few more days in National Preparedness Month, we are still offering, while supplies last, for $25 or more, your gift, our gift to you, is the Ultimate Women's and College Students Deluxe Safety Kit. It includes a self-protection book written for women, some other personal protection items, and all of it packed in a rugged military design handbag. Again, our gift to you for your gift of $25 or more. And for instructions on how to donate, log on to skywatchtv.com. We thank you for your comments, suggestions, questions. You can send those to me by email, dgilbert at skywatchtv.com. And thank you for watching. As we keep watch, I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV.